follow the secure browser extension to supercharge your conference calls. All right, we've all been on conference calls where the topic of discussion drifts outside of what we're comfortable discussing or our area of expertise. This can leave us feeling distracted, uncomfortable, and maybe like our values not fully being communicated. So let's take an example. This is a Zoom call with the CTO, and I'm interviewing for a technical position. He drops this word, or this acronym, GPT-3. I'm unfamiliar with what that is. So I launch up a new tab, I type in GPT-3, I hit search, I go searching, and I find a relevant result. I then digest that information to return to the call. At this point, the conversation has gone far beyond what I can now contribute to. And in the interest of this interview, I may put myself at a disadvantage. Enter Apollo, same situation, except in my Chrome browser, I am running Apollo, meaning that as the CTO mentions GPT-3, it highlights that keyword and gives me a real-time uh, snippet of information around what is being discussed, allowing me to contribute to a conversation that I may have been lost in and potentially get that role. The customers that we foresee being our initial market will be tech, tech workers, who uh, spend the majority of their days, like myself, in meetings, uh, with the overwhelming majority saying that a product like this would be something that they would at least use or try, with around 25% saying this is something they would see enough value to pay for. Our market, I see split in two, two parts. Uh, communication enhancement tools with really strong examples such as Superhuman, Grammarly, and Auto. And of course, as we all know, with COVID, work from home, video conferencing is explosive in terms of growth, looking at around 10% compounding for over the next six years. All right, in terms of competitors, we see two. There's Auto and Rev. Um, both of these, however, focus primarily on the transcription element of a conference call, meaning that the value to the user is delivered post-conference call, i.e. not in real time. We see our competitive difference being beyond the unique value prop, uh, first mover advantage, um, that we will also eventually have a unique data set to train models on, and this will be our core business, i.e. our focus is not gonna be fragmented across multiple other product streams. A business model, quite straightforward, follows a lot of other consumer SaaS products. You'll have a free trial, and at which point you will, after you exhaust that, you can upgrade to a paid uh, monthly subscription, and if you have a team, you've got some, uh, some people with you, you can uh, benefit from a group sort of discount. And Otter, as you can see, uh, an average price has sort of validated that consumers are willing to pay this price point. Uh, we see a variety of use cases. Uh, I won't run through all of them, but uh, one that I think is particularly tangible would be salespeople potentially selling a platform or a product into an industry or a company they're maybe not fully familiar with uh, by running uh, Apollo in the browser, they'll suddenly be able to understand those acronyms, venture that industry-specific jargon, thus coming off as more confident and more confident in selling. So the vision, we see becoming the Grammarly of conference calls. So Grammarly uses artificial intelligence to bolster your ability to communicate effectively and to be well-received through written form. Apollo, on the other end, uses artificial intelligence to bolster your ability to communicate and be well received through audio and visual, i.e. conference calls. So I'm gonna run through a short demo. We've built a, a Chrome extension, um, and what we're gonna see is a conference call where a product manager is checking in with a uh, marketing lead and a tech lead, and we will see that Rajesh is very cleverly running the Apollo plugin uh, on his browser and he'll be able to uniquely contribute to this conversation. Yeah, we've just got to ensure that we're PCI compliant, and then we can finish off that project. Oh, you mean the payment card industry compliance? Yes. Thank you for being up today, for Josh. <laughs> So the next time you are in a meeting, you feel like you are uninformed or you simply want to be more productive and more informed, please download the Apollo plugin from the Google Web Store. Thank you.
on and something like that is automatically done, or can you also go um, and do it yourself? So uh, roadmap-wise, we would like users to be able to go into those transcripts and highlight elements uh, that are of value to them, so we can train models to do that for them. However, right now we're going to use it in AWS API call to highlight the keywords. The keywords based on whether it's an acronym or not, or what is it that determines whether it's a keyword? I'm not exactly sure how that API functions, but, but we do know that it does highlight keywords. Um, so what we do is we upload the audio to AWS service um, a transcribe that gives the text back, and then we run through the comprehend, and we train that comprehend AWS another service to kind of give that words back. So um, uh, what we haven't done yet is that at the um, start of the sign up, we will kind of uh, um, address where uh, what industry they're coming in, and then we kind of gather the data and train the model behind the scene to kind of see that, okay, this particular industry is using these jargons, and this would be uh, eventually trained. Uh, that's amazing, guys. Um, you know, in the visual space as well, and also audio. Tell me about your tech roadmap. What, at what point are you going to release this? Uh, you know, first MVP that's actually working, and how much uh, yeah. going to cost as well? Yeah. So in, in terms of MVP, we can stitch together something using uh, Amazon APIs, and that can give us at least a validation of product market fit before uh, building our own our own model, which we estimate to be at around eighty thousand dollars. We can use an open source starting point. Yeah. So at least we're not starting you know, months, years, millions of dollars behind, uh, but certainly something that will improve over time. Did you want to add anything on that? No, that's all. Okay. So. Talk to me about the customer validation you do too. Yeah. Did you speak to what sort of audiences were you talking with and what was their reaction? Um, so we, we talked to 47 um, tech workers and found that um, uh, there's a lot of them have, the people who have the most frustration with um, being out of sync with the, the conversation are the people who have the, the most conversations, the most work calls, and it can be um, more than five calls per day. And um, we've, we've done a follow-up uh, response where um, more than 50% of the 14 respondents have more than four uh, work calls a day, and they would be willing at least to pay 20 cents per call, um, and some of them would even pay $2 per call, so that would be $10 a day. Um, and so there's some people who have a very, it's a big problem for them, and they're willing to pay for it, and that would be the, the low hanging fruit. So taking on to that, your, uh, your monthly fees of 16 and ten dollars per user, how do, how do you monetize that in the First couple of months, I mean, how does it look like? Hmm. How many so, users you can acquire? Your account, yeah. and your, you know. So, um, if we are to onboard 5,000 users yep. over um, an 18 month period, yep. which we see as, as being doable, we'd see uh, annualized revenue of recurring a million dollars. Close to a million dollars. Just a million. In terms of like, what have you built? What, how much of what we saw? Yeah. I mean, is, um, is so, um, all real? Yeah. So the part which is not real is we couldn't run the um, text to the comprehend part of the things. Um, that's something that we have to fix outside of this code. Uh, but the browser extension is there. Um, yeah, that whole process is there. It's something that uh, couldn't get in time. And or Chrome. That's correct. And Chrome. Where else would you like? So uh, um, we're gonna move forward, and we're gonna uh, uh, kind of address Firefox as well, all the browser extension. But the um, uh, we also are gonna address the um, native apps as well. So uh, for instance, you can have Zoom app on your phone, yeah. and we're gonna have an app in order to kind of address this issue for that. So we are in process of, and um, kind of the way we're gonna build it is kind of reuse the same functionality. Don't do it uh, twice. Do it once. Thank you.